Hey, welcome everybody again. Um, today we'll speak to another of our authors from Deconstructing Whiteness, Empire and Mission. And today we're speaking to James Butler, who co-wrote a chapter with Kathy Ross. And we've already heard from Kathy in an earlier video. So welcome, James. Thank you. Uh, could you introduce yourself, please? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm James Butler. I have two jobs. One is working at the Church Mission Society, uh, teaching on the MA program in Pioneer Ministry there. And the other is working at the University of Roehampton uh, as a postdoctoral researcher, uh, working in, in practical theology. Okay, thanks. So could you briefly describe what your chapter's about? Yeah, um, the the chapter that I wrote with colleague Kathy Ross is um, looks at the missionary Octavius Hadfield, who was in New Zealand in the um, 19th century, uh, working with the Maori, and focuses on a particular incident um, where the British government were uh, trying to take land off the Maori people and how Octavius Hadfield acted within that. Um, and in the chapter we, uh, I mean, the the title that we gave the chapter was about whether uh, Octavius Hadfield was a, a 19th century goodie or baddie. But really the move is to, is to go beyond this question of kind of goodies and baddies and to explore the complexities of being a missionary in the British Empire and to allow the way in which... Um, we explore both kind of perhaps his his strengths, Octavius Hadfield's strengths as a missionary and the way that he acted uh, with and for the Maori, uh, to seeking to um, justice for them, and the ways that he approached his missionary work, uh, and yet also noticing some of the, the blind spots that, that he had uh, in his work, the ways in which he assumed perhaps the good of the British Empire, the way he... Um, took on some of the uh, assumptions about kind of British exceptionalism and the, uh, the I, I guess, some, some kind of racist assumptions around uh, uh, different races and the, the ways in which they they might need to become more like the British uh, um, in, in, in the way that they, they were. Uh, and so the, the challenge in, in in highlighting some of the kind of injustices, some of the colonial assumptions that he had, is not necessarily to, to do this work of deciding whether he was a goodie or baddie, but to understand our own uh, complicity uh, within within empire in our in our society and the ways in which we might seek to to act for good, but actually uh, the ways in which we might be blind to the injustices and some of the, the structural challenges, uh, particularly as as two white people um, writing, you know, working in, in an affluent country, how might, you know, the ways that we seek to work for good, how might we actually be complicit within some of the injustices uh, in our own times? Thank you. So what made you take this particular approach to writing your chapter? Um, I mean, Kathy is from New Zealand, and so she was uh, more aware of, of the story of Octavius Hadfield than I was, uh, but she felt that it was an interesting way into exploring some of the complexities of empire. And so, um, I mean, Kathy handed me a whole load of, of documents uh, written by Hadfield to to read uh, and we had a had a conversation we had a number of conversations about them and explored them together uh and so i i don't think um initially i guess initially we perhaps did have a more um more of a sense of octavius hadfield the goody uh, and writing about how octavius hadfield perhaps had, had had acted in good ways uh in the face of of empire um and I guess uh, as we had these conversations about that, we realized, you know, that it was far more complex than that. And that you couldn't make a kind of simple story. 
And I guess engaging in that complexity also encouraged us to engage within the complexities that we experienced. And I think uh, kind of going deep into one person's story or a particular time within their life, you know, this particular moment uh, of challenging the British Empire over their um, taking of land from the Maori. Um, you know, in focusing on that, I think we began to realise the ways in which um, it was just as it wasn't easy to either label Hadfield as a goodie or baddie that you know that those complexities were ones that we lived in in here. And so when we do reflect on um, on capitalism in particular um, within the text uh, within the chapter, but um, yeah, other other ways in which the kind of challenges around race, inclusion and diversity. Um, you know, this might speak into some of those those things and help help us to see them in them in the more complex light that they are. <laughs> Thank you. So what would you say has shaped your social conscience? Um, yeah, it was really interesting to reflect on this uh, and to see those those different strands um, trying to kind of remember different things that had had an impact on me. Uh, I, I became aware that, that films had quite an important part to play in this um, and particularly um, yeah, films around issues of race and empire. I mean, particularly I remember watching Gandhi uh, the Gandhi film in my late teens and being impacted by that and and, and justice there. Um, the twenty four seven prayer movement um, had a had a tagline prayer mission justice and I was involved with with that and I think mission was something that I was passionate about. My uh, uncle and auntie were missionaries in Nepal. It had always been something that I had been aware of. And towards the end of my teens, I, I went on a mission trip to Argentina for in a summer holiday before university. And so mission was something that was um, of interest to me. I felt kind of drawn towards. Uh, and so with the 24-7 prayer movement, making this connection between prayer, mission and justice, I, you know, that seemed very natural to me. And so these issues of justice and passion for justice connected very naturally to my uh, own sense of um, kind of perhaps calling towards mission. Um, after university, I went to um, I went to Uruguay for two years, and and before doing that, I spent seven weeks at Redcliffe Mission College in Gloucester. And there was one lecturer there, Jonathan Ingleby, who had um, had had written and taught on on kind of empire and post colonialism. And I think um, he had a very gentle way of, of teaching these things, but um, the way that he raised some of these questions and issues uh, really stirred me. And, and I think, you know, as, as, as I was thinking about, um, about this, you know, realizing that that had an important part in kind of drawing my awareness to deeper issues of, of race and colonialism. Uh, I think living in Uruguay and spending some time in Argentina, you know, I was asked these questions about being British, about about the British Empire, and quickly realised that the kind of history that I've been taught at school did not stand up to scrutiny around around the empire. That I had a very one sided view of these things uh, and encouraged me to look further. And I think particularly in Argentina, um, uh, with the Falkland Islands, that's Malvinas. And having to kind of, yeah, have those conversations with people made me aware of of, of these issues uh, really around around colonialism and made me realize I needed to educate myself. Um, I think uh, more recently, uh, reading uh, um, theology books uh, around around empire and. Um, uh, and race have, has been significant. Um, colleagues, Kathy Ross, and her, um, her has you know, opened my eyes. You know, who I wrote the chapter with 
uh, has opened my eyes further to issues around around feminism and uh, and theology. Um, getting to know Anthony Reddy and others, uh, working with um, Harvey Kriani. Uh, um, you know, this, this has been a, important to kind of be alongside people to hear these things and to have those conversations with them. Um, and yeah, I, I feel like I'm, I'm learning a lot and uh, that these, yeah, that increasingly the importance of these things and needing uh, these things needing to to shape the way we do theology. I'm increasingly convinced that questions of race, colonialism, inclusion, um, you know, need to be need to be present as we as we do our theology. Um, otherwise, we're just kind of well denying the complexities of the times in which we live. Thank you. So what do you think are the biggest challenges to the church and the wider society in terms of creating frameworks for social justice? I mean, yeah, I find <laughs> overwhelming question. Um, I mean, there are all sorts of challenges, clearly. Um, I think for me, um, the status, you know, people just assume that the status quo is is on the whole good and are unwilling to perhaps go go deeper um it's easy to kind of write things off as as bad apples or um particular you know there's particular ways in which um you know individuals have acted that have caused these things and perhaps unwilling to go a bit deeper and to to pick apart the structures um i think there's also an awareness that if you start to kind of pull at too many bricks you might end up having to rebuild the whole thing and people are scared of that um so i think in many ways that's the, the perhaps the biggest challenge here is is really whether whether that's a conscious thing that people consciously don't want to unpick these things or whether it's a subconscious thing of of actually it's you know it's too complicated and uh, i'm happy to kind of stick with the the simple answers that I've had before rather than deal with the realities there but uh, um yeah i i think that's what i've i've realized in going on this journey is that it's it's a complex journey um where you're going to have to to unpick a lot of threads and perhaps a lot of uh yeah structures are going to have to come down and be built in new ways um it's hard um but i it's a lot i realize in even saying that that i'm saying that from a privilege of uh from you know from a privileged position uh and and actually if if those of us who have not experience these injustices firsthand um aren't willing to take a bit of the pain uh and in in going on these journeys then i i think that's it's always going to be a challenge but i think if we can help people to to listen to to hear some of these these challenges perhaps we can begin to go on that journey to um to find those yeah, to, to challenge injustice and to find new, as you said, new platforms and frameworks for social justice. Thank you. Just to finish, what do you hope people take away from reading your chapter? I I mean, I really hope that that people will engage with the complexities of their own context and situation um to realize that perhaps the answers that we've always had may not be the whole of the reality and mm. just as octavius hadfield i mean i totally believe that octavius hadfield was always seeking to act for good to act in godly ways and yet some of his underlying assumptions 
were assumptions formed in um, in colonialism, in the logic of colonialism, and within kind of the empire and the perspective of the empire. And so to realize that in our desires to act for good, that we may still be holding assumptions around what that good looks like, which is actually shaped by structures which aren't fully committed to that good. And so I hope that um, in reading this, that people might reflect, I think in in revisiting this ahead of talking to you, I think the thing that stood out to me was um, was the place of prayer and how yeah how particularly in the accounts of the Maori and in reflecting on um, accounts from the Book of Acts that the place that the early Christians turned the place where the Maoris turned were to prayer and to trust in God and so I hope also that from this chapter there's a um a sense of of turning to to god uh in this and not just taking on uh thinking that somehow we can solve injustice uh in our own strength but to see that as part of joining in with god's mission in the world uh, and acting with god for justice thank you james so thank you for sharing your thoughts with us today. And uh, now that the book's out, I'm sure people will be <laughs> interested to uh, read your chapter more fully. But thank you for taking the time out to share with us today. Thank you so much.